Good morning and welcome. If you would like to follow along with the readings, they can be found on 1135, 1135. Please join us in singing our opening hymn, number 839, as we gather at your table, number 839. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, we want to welcome all of you who have come to celebrate with us today, the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In a special way, we welcome all those who are here for the two baptisms we will be celebrating after Mass. So we welcome all of our visitors. We also want to welcome those who are watching us live streamed and those who will watch us later in the day recorded. Let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now let us give glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God.
Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now with those going to children's liturgy, please come forward. My dear children, today you will learn that staying connected to Jesus is what will make us good Christian people. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, look with love upon these, people, upon these children. Help them always to remain connected to your son Jesus as their Savior and brother. May they always live good Christian lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Now you may go to children's liturgy. Go and listen to the word of God. God has the words of everlasting life. God has A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores, the Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Our psalm response is number 62. Lord, let us see your kindness.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of God's grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor, that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times. To sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick. No food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, as much as going on vacation is good, it is always good to return home. Each of today's readings has practical implications for our everyday life. One of the most beautiful verses in the Old Testament is Micah 6, 8. What is good has been explained to you. This is what God asks of you, only this, to act justly, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly with your God. Scripture scholars tell us that this verse captures the main message of each of the three previous prophets. The prophet Amos calls us to act justly. The prophet Hosea calls us to love tenderly. And the prophet Isaiah calls us to walk humbly with our God. Amos was a shepherd from the kingdom of Judah who was called by God to preach in the northern kingdom during the 8th century before Christ. In today's reading, the priest Amaziah expelled Amos from Bethel. Amos' response is what is of interest to us today. Amos responded to Amaziah that he was no prophet, nor did he belong to any company of prophets. In other words, he was not a professional prophet, nor did he belong to the prophet's union. 
God chose the shepherd to proclaim his word, specifically to denounce injustice. In today's language, this means that God does not just choose priests, sisters, and parish professional staffs to proclaim the gospel. The Second Vatican Council emphasized that it is you, the laity, who are called to bring Christ to the world. Specifically, you are called to practice justice in the larger society, and you are called to challenge injustice wherever and whenever it occurs. This has particular relevance this year. In this election year, as in every election year, we need to ask ourselves to what extent we are willing to bring our Catholic Christian values into the public debate. And this is also especially true today after the assassination attempt on Donald Trump last night. Today's second reading is a prayer of praise to God for God's wonderful plan of salvation. It sees all of human history as salvation history. It sees Jesus Christ as the center of God's gracious plan. It reminds us that we have been chosen by God, chosen to be God's adopted sons and daughters through, Christ, through Jesus Christ and the salvation he won for us by his death on the cross. This reading then challenges us to examine our own worldview. To what extent do we recognize God's presence power and activity in world events and in our own lives. In other words, do we see the world and human history with eyes of faith? Also, it is about priorities. Do we think about life after life? Do we think about the potential eternal consequences of our choices today? My brothers and sisters, in today's gospel, Jesus sends out the apostles two by two. Why did he send them out two by two? Because it is easier to proclaim and live the gospel in community than alone. When I give marriage instructions, I always remind couples of St. Paul's call to support one another in faith. It is much easier to live our Christian faith with others than alone. When we live our Christian faith in community, we encourage one another and we hold one another accountable. Believing, practicing Catholics and Christians call forth the best in each other. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Spirit. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray to be faithful to the light we have received, to the name we bear. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may allow the good seed of the gospel to take root within us, and bring forth a harvest of compassion and generosity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may they have the courage to work together to bring about peace for the whole world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Eucharistic Congress being held in Indianapolis this week, may we deepen our faith in the real presence of Christ and the Eucharist, 
and lead us to lead Eucharistic lives of thanksgiving and service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may we take time each day to give thanks to God for the many gifts he bestows upon us and strive to serve him with joyful hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Butch and Donna Brown celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary this week, and for all married couples, may their love continue to be a lesson in Christian living. Pray, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Merrill Blackwell, husband of Marilyn Blackwell, and Paul Georgescu, husband of Georgianne Georgescu, Jane Bell and Jesse White, sister-in-law of Mike and Maureen Battles, all of whom have died recently. May they receive the reward of a life well spent and come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the people of Little Flower Parish, this morning's special mass intention, and for all the intentions we recall now in silence. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, let the light of your truth guide us to your kingdom, to a world filled with lights contrary to your own. Christian is the name and the gospel we glory in. May your love make us what you have called us to be. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gift bearers for Mass this morning are the Jones family. Please join us in singing number 727, Come to Me, O Weary, weary Traveler, number 727.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our faith and the of the Church. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Therese, the little flower, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gathered, gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> Taught by our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Today, we celebrate the 60th wedding anniversary of Butch and Donna Brown, so if they would come forward for the anniversary blessing. Now, what day is your actual anniversary? When is your actual anniversary? Yesterday? Okay. During wedding liturgies, the nuptial blessing or the wedding blessing always takes place after the Our Father. And so likewise, the church asks us to do anniversary blessings after the Our Father as well. And I invite you to extend your hands in blessing over them. Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning, you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise blessed the union of Butch with Donna so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace so that, surrounded by their children, they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let's congratulate them. And now you may kiss each other. Thank you. Thank you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing number 723, Shepherd of My Heart, number 723.
Just one announcement. Please join us for coffee and donuts immediately following Mass in the school cafeteria. This past Friday, we celebrated the funeral of Merrill Blackwell, who died on Monday, July 8th. Merrill was 88 years old. He and his wife, Marilyn, were among the early parish leaders after the Second Vatican Council. They were truly pillars of the parish. In recent years, they have not been able to come to Little Flower for Mass very often. However, when they came, they sat right behind the server on this side. They had three children, Mike, Gary, and Donnie. Gary is a permanent deacon of the Archdiocese. So please pray for Merrill, Marilyn, Mike, Gary, and Donnie, and all their families. Paul Georgescu died on Tuesday, June 4th. We will celebrate his funeral mass tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. There will be visitation from 10 to 10.30. Paul was also 88 years old. He grew up in Little Flower and attended Little Flower School. He and his wife, Georgianne, were married for 62 years. For many years, they lived on the southeast corner of 13th and Wallace. Please pray for Paul, Georgianne, their children, Paul and Anne, and their entire family. Finally, Jane Bell died Thursday evening. Jane was 83 years old. She was a lifelong member of Little Flower, was on our school wall of honor. Jane was involved in many ministries until she was no longer able. At this time, we do not have any word on the, any arrangements for her, so please pray for her, her family, and her friends. When she came to church, and she hasn't been able to come very often for quite some time, she typically sat right there. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, number 616. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Number six, one, six. We will sing verses one and three. <laughs> 